Do you ever feel like the life energy within you has just been completely sapped and drained away? Like there's nothing left in the tank? I know I have. Today I wanna to share with you three practical ways of how you can respond when life leaves you feeling empty on the inside, thus moving you from a state of emptiness to a state of feeling fulfilled one more time. All that coming up in just a second. Stay tuned. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Jason and I want to welcome you back for another video. On this channel, we are all about reframing the way we see ourselves, other people, and the windows of our world. If this is your first time here, a super warm welcome to you. Before we go any further, smash that subscribe button right now and then ring that little notification bell. And that way when I post brand new content on a weekly basis and you want to come back for more, you'll be notified right away. Okay, so today we're talking about filling the tank back up when we're feeling empty. Let's just dig into it right now. Let's go. So this just happened a couple hours ago and it's kind of a funny story and it's really applicable to what we're talking about today. You gotta hear this. So I get up this morning and I start recording. I had this all planned out. Have it mapped out, talking points, you name it. I can even show it to you if it weren't literally right in front of me. And anyway, I get to the intro, all good. I get to the welcome, all good. And then I get to these talking points, this portion, and not so good. Take one turns into take eight, nine, 10, each six and a half, seven minutes long before I stop the camera. The longest being like nine and a half minutes. I'm just tripping over my tongue, I'm flustered. I'm having a hard time trying to tell what I need to say. And so I shut off my camera and it was around 12.30 anyway and I go and grab my girls and I said, hey, I need to clear my head. I'm gonna get out of the house and go grab a bite to eat. You wanna come with me? And they were like, absolutely. So we grabbed the pooch, we grabbed Donut Dave and we leave the house and they wanted something different. So we head to Arby's and they get a hot roast beef. Well, I didn't want a hot roast beef. I wanted a greasy double cheeseburger from McDonald's. I knew exactly what I wanted because I like greasy double cheeseburgers from McDonald's. So we head there on my way home. And I order and we get to that place where the two lanes merge into one, you know, and we see some commotion happening up in front of us. I'm like, what is going on here? Two car lengths in front of us is this big black Dodge Ram pick em up truck. And the driver, I mean big truck, man truck. And the driver gets out of his truck and he approaches the car in front of us and they have a conversation and I can't see it or hear it. Well, I see it, but I can't hear it. And um, next thing I know, the driver of the car is backing up and backing up and backing up and backing up. And he does a good job to make sure he doesn't hit us. And I'm like, why is this guy backing up? And he's about parallel to us. And then I see the driver of the pick -em up truck literally pushing his truck out of the drive through lane. He's got one hand on the wheel and the other hand he's pushing this big, huge monster truck. I mean, this guy's gotta be strong as an ox. He's pushing it out of the drive through lane. And I'm having a total Homer Simpson moment. Like, duh, not putting two and two together. Anyway, we pay for our lunch and I get up to the window where I'm ready to grab my lunch and he approaches the window and I give him space and I hear him say pretty audibly, I'm sorry, I was in the lane, paid for my lunch, but then I ran out of gas and while my truck is back over here, can I still get my food? I grab my lunch and we head home and I'm snickering along the way thinking, here I am making this video about us emotionally running out of gas and this guy literally runs out of gas in the drive through lane. How ironic is that? He's probably sitting back and laughing at it right about now. He had a smile on his face. I think he was good. But what about those times when it's not just that? What about those times when it really does suck? Where we emotionally run out of gas. Where there's like nothing left in the tank and our engines are sputtering. We need to know how to respond in those situations, right? Today I'm gonna to share with you three things that happened to me, three ways that I responded when my tank was almost at empty, where I had like maybe four miles left in my tank before my engine shut off. And that happened four years ago. You've heard part of the story, but I promise you, you have not heard this portion of the story. And it's the reason it's taking me six hours 
to share this with you. So please just hang on with me. This is good. And if you're in a bad spot right now, stick around because I promise you there's light at the end of the tunnel. Just hold on to me for a second. Here we go. Let's back up the truck, all pun intended, to four years ago. So you've heard that four years ago, you've heard this portion of the story, I resigned my position as the senior pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church here in Maumee, Ohio, where I live. What you haven't heard is that I was suicidal. I mean, I really wanted to slip out of this life and into the next. I was hurting, I was in pain. I was rejected. Not by a large majority, but by a really small, loud, vocal minority who just didn't want me around anymore. And I didn't get over that rejection quick. I don't think any of us do if we're honest with ourselves. Well, months passed and months passed and I'm trying to start this new thing, but it, I was an emotional basket case and they knew it. Well, the day it all hit rock bottom and the day it turned around, and this is where it really rubber meets the road. It was July 3rd, the day here in Maumee where we celebrate Independence Day. And while we would gather every year right at the grounds on the yard at St. Paul's Lutheran Church because it was one of the best places to view the fireworks. Everybody knows it. It's why thousands literally sit on the property of the church. And I knew that. And I was having a hard time with that. And I didn't get out of bed. I laid there in a fetal position, literally shutting the world off, just thinking, I want this to be done. I want this to be over. I can't do this life anymore. That's what I was thinking about for days, for weeks ahead of time. All I could think about was slipping out of this life and into the next, knowing intellectually it would cause more hurt and pain. I've buried too many people, including my own cousin, from suicide, so I knew it wasn't the way to slip out. Intellectually, I knew that, but emotionally, I was in so much pain, I didn't know what to do. So I stayed there in bed and I shut the world out. My wife rubbed my back, she tried to talk with me, so did my kids, and, and they said, we wanna go down, will you please come with us? And they kept asking, will you please come with us? And I said, can't do it. And so I said, you go ahead. And they did, not knowing what was coming next. They trusted me in God's hands. They got town town and they met up with some friends of ours, Heath and Andrea Holland. I call him Pooh Daddy, everybody does. And Danielle and Emma and Grace sat down next to Pooh and Andrea and Lydia, their daughter. The next thing I know, I get this Facebook IM from Pooh saying, hey buddy, I miss you, where are you? And I didn't respond. And I hear another one, Jason, are you okay? What's going on? And I responded to Pooh and I said, I don't, I don't know if I can, can do this, Pooh. I can't step foot on those grounds. It's too much pain for me. And he understood, he sympathized. And he said, well, if I were you, I'd just give him one of those and do it despite them. What Pooh doesn't know is he saved my life that night. I don't know if I would have made it through that night if it weren't for him. I mean, I heard my wife, I heard my daughters. I know that they love me unconditionally with everything that's within them, but you know, when you live with somebody, you don't hear them as much as maybe you hear people from the outside. And, and Pooh, he was that outside voice that I needed to hear that night. He literally got me out of my bed, got me dressed again, and I got out of the house and I marched down the road. I didn't go downtown, but I went to a ballpark nearby and, and I watched the fireworks. I literally clung on to Poo that night. He saved my life. And that's the first solution. When you're in a really bad emotional spot, you find that person, your person who you can cling on to, who you can hold on to, you, who, who's, gonna, who's gonna get you out of the bed, who's gonna move you from, from here to there. They're gonna put a gallon of gas or two into your tank so you can get back onto the road and get to the gas station and start functioning again. Pooh did that for me. He saved my life, literally. Pooh, if you're watching this, you need to hear this, buddy, that you saved my life and I'm forever indebted to you. It's taken me six hours to get this out because it's so raw. That's where I was. 
And from there, I had enough gas in the tank that, um, that I could start focusing on some positive things and not the negative anymore. That's step two. Find something positive you can focus on. For me, that happened when a book arrived in the mail. Let's show you the book. It's called Go For No. It's really small, it's thin. It's like 75 pages. My wife had ordered it actually for her home-based business. And I intercepted it and I read it first and I highlighted the crap out of that book. I, I read that book like twice. And I remember saying to her, I wanna do that. And she said, you wanna do what? I said, I wanna do that thing. It's all about sales. I had never really been in sales sales before, at least never where I had succeeded. And I said, I wanna do that. And she's like, okay, do that thing. I found something to put my, my attention onto, something positive to focus on. And so I did, and I moved in that direction. And in time, I found myself working for a company called Trelevate. They took a chance on me and hired me, and I did really, really well with them. I focused my energy in a new positive direction right? That's what you got to do. You can't dwell on the past. You got to look forward. It's the second thing we can do. It's the second practical way we can respond when our tanks feel empty because it fills up the tank even more. Helps us get down the road. And the third thing that we can do after that point is take the attention off of us and put it on to other people like Pooh did for me. When we focus on other people, and this is the third practical thing that you can do to keep your tank filled up, is to not focus on yourself, but to focus on other people, to help other people. You've heard me say it before that God put you on this earth to impact other people's lives. That's why I do what I do on this channel, to impact your life, to help you help other people, right? That's what we're here to do. Pooh did that for me. He saved my life that night. He helped me put some gas in my emotional tank to help me get down the road. He still does that for me on a daily basis through his humor, just through his life, right? Hopefully we do that for one another. We need that. But our job, once we're filled up, is to then take some of that gas and pour it in the tank of other people that need to be filled up. I hope I get to do that for you. So when you're in that down spot, the first thing you do is you latch on to somebody else. Hold on to them for dear life and help them fill your tank. And then fill up your tank a little bit more by focusing your positive energy onto something positive and not dwelling in the past. And then once you're filled up, you take some of that gas out of your tank and you help somebody else out. And that fills you up more than you're gonna fill them up. And those are three practical things that you can do to keep your tank filled, especially when you're running low. Is it quick and is it easy? No, it's not. But it's three practical things you can do to go from empty to full. Hey, if this has been helpful for you, give me a thumbs up. And oh, by the way, YouTube loves it, by the way. And if you have not already, crush that subscribe button. I mean, smash that sucker. And then hit the notification bell. Join this community. Let's have conversations, right? And share this content. Share it with somebody who might need it. If you're not there right now, chances are you know somebody who's in a down spot. Share this content with them. And then check out these videos up here too. You might get a laugh out of them. Maybe they'll help you out. That's what I got for today. Until we get to chat again this coming Friday, be well, stay safe, and well, we'll talk soon. Goodbye.